Consider the following NAND expression. We have F equals A and B all knotted. And that's the Boolean expression for a NAND gate. Now what De Morgan's theorem tells us is this. That the knot that I'm pointing to here will alter what's below in the following way. The A, which is this one here, will become not A. The AND symbol, which is this one here, will become the OR symbol. And the B, which is here, will become NOT B. And that's an illustration of one aspect of De Morgan's theorem. Let's now take another expression. Let's take F is A or B, or knotted. Now this is the Boolean expression for a NOR gate. And what happens here is that the A... Well, that will become not A. The OR will become an AND. And the B will become a not B. So there's another application of De Morgan's theorem. Let's take another example. Let's take F is not A or B. And let's have all of that knotted. Now, what will happen in this particular case, here we can see we have not A. And the bar here will not the not A to give A. The OR will become an AND, and the B, well, that will become a not B. Let's have a look at a, another example. Let's take F is A AND not B, all knotted. Now, what will happen on this particular case, the A will become not A, the AND will become an OR, and the not B, well that's knotted to give us B. Now there we have seen some illustrations of the use of De Morgan's theorem. Now if we look at the individual expressions, let's have a look at this one here. Well we can see it doesn't look much like this one, but they are logically equivalent. And of course we can use perfect induction to prove this. If I have a look at this one, this one doesn't look much like this one here, but again, they are logically equivalent. Now what I'll do in a moment, I will actually illustrate that they are equivalent using perfect induction. And in fact, I'm just going to do that for this one here. These three, then I'll leave that as an exercise for you to have a go at. You can see if you can show through perfect induction that these expressions are the same, i.e. that this one is the same as this one here and this one is the same as this one here. But I'll be just doing this one here, as I've already um, mentioned. So for De Morgan's theorem, we're really saying this. If you've got an OR and there's a NOT appears above it, then that will actually become an AND. If you have an AND and it's got a NOT above it, then that will actually become an OR. And that, if you like, is a good memory aid. So consider that as a a memory aid to help you understand De Morgan's theorem. If you've got an A and a bar appears above that one, then that one will obviously become a not A. If you had a not A, a bar above that one would in fact give you A. So to illustrate that again, imagine you have the following. Uh, F is A or not B or C. Now, if all of that was knotted and I decided to apply De Morgan's theorem, i.e. use this knot here to alter what's below, then the A would become not A, the OR would become an AND, the not B would become a B, this OR would become an AND, and this C would become not C. Let's take another example here. Let's say I have F is A and B and not C. And all that was actually knotted. If I decided to use this knot here, I could alter what's below in the following way. The A would become not A. The AND would become OR. The B would become not B. The AND would become an OR. And the not C would become a C. Now, although they don't look alike, this expression here, is logically the same as this one here. This one is logically the same as this. 
and of course you can prove that to yourself using perfect induction. If you can't remember how to do perfect induction then refer back to previous videos in this playlist and there's one in fact on perfect induction. What I'm going to do now is as promised a moment ago I'm going to actually um, do a proof using perfect deduction for this one up here. We started off the video by looking at this one. I'm just going to apply De Morgan's theorem to it again just to remind you what we did. The A becomes not A, the AND becomes an OR and the B becomes a not B. Now what I'm going to do now is to use perfect induction to show you that in fact these two expressions which look different are logically equivalent and at the same time reminding you of what logically equivalent actually means. We need to start off by writing out a truth table so I'm going to take a and b as my variables and here I'm going to write a and b all knotted and remember that is a NAND expression so we should be able to write down immediately what the output is for this NAND expression but before I do that I'm quickly going to write down the possible combinations for A and B here now if we're now going to do this column here we need to realize that this is a NAND which is the opposite of an AND now the only occasion where we have a 1 at the output for an AND gate is in this position here of course that's a 1 for an AND but we're dealing with a NAND. Consequently, what I need to do here is to place a zero. Now, all the other positions for an AND gate give us a zero out, but this isn't an AND, it's a NAND. It's the opposite of an AND. So all of these will be one. Now, if you cannot remember that from the previous videos, then you need to go back and look at those videos. You really do need to have an understanding of all of the Boolean expressions and the truth tables that represent them. Using the truth table, we now need to derive the output for this particular Boolean expression here. So let's do that right now. We need to have an output for the not A. We need to have an output for the not B. And with both of these columns then, we all them together to give us not A or not B. So let's do that. And we're going to start off by looking at the not A column. So here we can see that the A is a 0. Consequently, the not A will be a 1. Here we can see the A is a 0 again. Consequently, the not A will be a 1. And we can see here we have two 1s for the A. Now that will mean that we'll have a, a 0 and a 0 here. Let's now do the not B. Well, we can see that the B here is a 0 so the not B will be a 1 the B here is a 1 so the not B will be a 0 and here we can see 0 1 for B so that will be 1 0 for the not B now for this column here we can see we're ordering together the not A with the not B so here I can see I've got a 1 or a 1 and of course that will give me a 1 here on this occasion, I can see that I've got a 1 or a 0. Now, that's sufficient to give me a 1. The next entry here in the truth table is a 0 and a 1. Now, we're ordering those together, so that will give me a 1. And finally, the last entry here, we can see we have a 0 or a 0, which will give me a 0. Of course, if I now have a look at this column here, and I compare it to this column, we can see that they are exactly the same in terms of the ones and zeros and their positions. Consequently, we are able to say that this is the same as uh, not A or not B. Thus proving that for this example, the Morgan theorem actually works. Now, what I want you to do, I want you to look at these here, these three and prove to yourself that these are correct. So have a go at doing that when you finish watching uh, this particular video. We've just shown that these two expressions are logically the same. Now they're logically the same because for the same combinations of variables A and B we get the same output. Now to emphasize that what I'm going to do here is to draw the logic 
gait representation of both of these Boolean expressions. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take A and B and I'm going to put those through a NAND gate, as you can see here, and that will give me A and B all knotted. So that's the first expression. Then I'm going to take the A and B again. I'm going to put the A through a NOT gate to give me NOT A. I'm going to put the B through a NOT gate to give me NOT B. And then I'm going to take both of those and have these acting as the input to an OR gate. And of course the output of the OR gate would now be NOT A or NOT B. If we look at this logic circuit here, and we are to compare it with this logic circuit, then a superficial look will tell you that, well, they're different, aren't they? Well, they are. They look different. And they're built up from different gates. But in terms of their logic functionality, they're exactly the same. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means whatever the combination is at A and B here, if you have the same combination here, you can guarantee that the output at this point and this point here will be identical. Now, the only way to do that, in fact, is to go through every possible combination of A and B and, and prove it to yourself. Now, this has been done in previous videos. What I'm going to do here is just to show it for one of the combinations and leave it to you to check the other combinations out. Now, I've reproduced the circuits here, as you can see, and I can choose a combination of A and B. And the one I'm going to choose is when A and B are both zero. So when this A is a zero here, and b is a zero which means i must use the same conditions over here if i'm intending to show that they give the same output now this particular circuit is a nand gate now when we have two zeros at the input to a nand gate the output will be a one now if you haven't got that you need to go back and look at the videos on nand gates if i now come to this particular circuit arrangement here what i can see is at a i've got a zero Consequently, when that goes through the NOT gate, it'll be a 1 here. And here I can see B is a 0, so when that goes through the NOT gate, it'll be a 1 here. Now, because this is an OR gate, when you have two ones at the input to an OR gate, then the output is going to be a 1. And I think we can now see that when A and Bs were 0, both gates give us a 1 at the output as you can see here and here so I've just shown for one of the possible combinations that the output is the same for both when their inputs are have the same combination of course you have to now do it for the other combinations ie when we have a as a, a zero and b is a one and the other combination is when a is a one and b is a zero and of course the other combination is when they are both one now you go ahead and show for those combinations that the outputs are the same. They won't always be a 1, the outputs, but they will be the same for the same input combinations.